The common practice of determining placement of femoral drill sites for ACL reconstruction by means of an imaginary clock in the transverse plane of the intercondylar notch has no basis in anatomy. If the 12 o'clock position is at the anterior extremity of the notch, then 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock are necessarily excessively anterior. In ACL surgery, the clock should be on the wall, not in the knee. In other words, time out, and here's why. In 1923, Timbrell Fisher used this sliding loop mechanism. Neither the technique nor drill sites were proper, and, as we will see, the drill site problem persists to this day. In 1975, we outlined the ACL attachment on a cadaver femur using wire and made a radiograph in order to help determine the accuracy of the femoral drill hole placement on post-operative films. It was obvious that all of the ligament attachments was posterior to the plane of the posterior cortex of the shaft. This was apparent on a view with the femur in the anatomic position, but with the femur horizontal, one could, with inadvertence, tend to mistake a posterior position for an inferior or lower one. As pointed out by Dr. Scott Dye, Ariops's ACL was attached to the lateral femoral condyle 340 million years ago. So it came as somewhat of a surprise to find that 340 million 1,984 years later, somebody moved it. How could this have happened? In 1983, the ACL was still on the lateral femoral condyle, at least in Switzerland. What time was it? About 8.30. But imprecise transfer of the ACL origin from the lateral femoral condyle to the intercondylar notch roof was illustrated without comment by authorities in Lansing in 1984, in Salt Lake City in 1998, in Anchorage in 2000, including a broken guide pin in the thigh, and here at home in Seattle in 2002. Muller's 1983 book showed the ACL attachment right where it was in the Ariops knee, at the back of the lateral femoral condyle, adjacent to the posterior margin of the articular cartilage. And he showed, as was later emphasized by Leo Pinchevsky, that maximum knee flexion permits access to the lateral femoral condyle at the proper position and in a direction more perpendicular to the lateral wall and at about 8.15 on the clock, but only if the drill enters from the level of the joint and not through the tibia. A more vertical inclination of the course of the drill into the medial wall of the lateral femoral condyle produces an oblong hole that is greater in dimension than that resulting from a transverse course. The amount of increase is directly proportional to the amount of divergence from a transverse course. If, for example, we intend to drill a 10 mm hole using a 10 mm drill, the drill must enter while perpendicular to the drilled surface. If we angle the drill from a horizontal to more vertical positions, the heights of the drill holes increase proportionately. This effect is especially significant if the drill reaches the femur through the tibial drill hole, as there is no room for adjusting the angle. This was probably a major factor in accepting erroneously the roof of the intercondylar notch as the site for the femoral drill hole. A transaxial MRI view, somewhat distal to the femoral ACL attachment, shows the posterior margin of the ACL immediately adjacent to the posterior articular margin of the lateral femoral condyle. If the drill is directed to the 11 o'clock position, it will miss the ACL attachment site. The proper drill site is at around 8 o'clock, not 11 o'clock. Note that, in order for the drill to reach it from the level of the joint, it must be nearly horizontal. With a lateral view in the anatomic position, the locations of the anterior and posterior parts of the knee are apparent. But when the limb is horizontal, as during surgery, it is easy to forget that the anterior part of the knee is towards the ceiling, 
and the posterior part is toward the floor. So that, when advancing a scope horizontally into the knee, it is traveling in a posterior direction only with respect to the flexed tibia. It is traveling proximally with respect to the femur. In order to go to the posterior part of the femur, the scope must incline downward toward the floor. In 1979, Open surgery for ACL tears left no doubt about the location of its femoral attachment. The posterior part of the lateral femoral condyle, immediately adjacent to the articular margin, that is, about 745 on this clock. In 1981, it's a little before 8. Twenty years later, arthrotomy for a different problem showed the ACL where it always had been. The post-operative radiograph on the left shows the almost posterior inclination of the graft, making the graft incapable of preventing anterior tibial translation compared to the anterior inclination when the attachment is in its normal position. Note that when the original graft is excessively anterior, revision is often possible without a need for disturbing the original screw or graft. Any progress with all this information? The bottom row shows current views of ACL reconstruction performed and promoted by various experts on the internet. All show the roof of the intercondylar notch as the site for attaching the femoral end of the graft. The image with the asterisk appears in the next slide. The image on the left shows the surgeon demonstrating the attachment of the torn ACL, but that's not where he put the graft. After removing a substantial segment of normal bone and articular cartilage, the graft lies anteriorly and medially with respect to its original position, resulting in an excessively vertical course. Is it any wonder that the graft will collide with the front of the intercondylar notch? These are 30-year-old photos of ACL reconstruction, done before we started doing them arthroscopically, when there was no doubt of the femoral attachment site with the knee open. What time is it? It's time to stop watching the clock and to start putting the graft where it belongs. Dr. Freddy Fu said that for years he put the femoral end of the graft too far anteriorly. Now he's got it right. His 3D CT scan and surgical photograph show the double bundle locations properly posteriorly. Dr. Fu shows a lingering effect of previous misdirection when, as in this illustration, he indicates that the position is posterior only when the knee is flexed 90 degrees. Of course, the location remains the same regardless of the position of the patient or the surgeon. What he means is that the hole must be posteriorly placed and that it's easy to mistake proximal direction for posterior direction when looking through the scope at the end of the femur. The customary lateral portal produces a limited view of the medial wall of the lateral femoral condyle because of its vertical orientation so that the medial margin obscures the femoral attachment of the ACL. We think that this was responsible for the development of the ill-advised notchplasty, which removed normal bone and cartilage to enable a view of the medial part of the lateral femoral condyle. With the scope in a medial portal, there is an unobstructed view of the entire medial side of the lateral femoral condyle and therefore the attachment of the ACL. It shows that there is no impingement of the ACL against the condyle, and certainly none with the roof of the intercondylar notch, and that a notchplasty will destroy normal bone and cartilage needlessly. Once again, when advancing a scope horizontally into the knee, it is traveling in a posterior direction only with respect to the flexed tibia. It is traveling proximally with respect to the femur. In order to go to the posterior part of the femur, the scope must look downward toward the floor. These two photos are examples of the common misconception 
that the ACL attaches to the roof of the intercondylar notch of the femur. These two surgeons were apparently unaware that the ACL attaches to the medial side of the lateral femoral condyle, indicated here by the red ovals. Notice also the vertical inclination of the medial wall of the lateral femoral condyle, and therefore the impossibility of drilling a properly oriented hole for the graft if the drill enters from a hole in the tibia, as in these images. The principle is evident when we put drill hole images over the image of the femur and ACL. The vertical height of the drill holes increases as the angle of approach of the drill bit diverges from the horizontal. This is not directly related to malposition of the femoral drill hole, but it should be evident that if the surgeon drills into a bone surface that is horizontal, he is drilling into the roof of the intercondylar notch where no fibers of the ACL have their attachment. Also evident is the fact that a round hole cannot be drilled in the medial wall of the condyle if the drill approaches the femur through a drill hole in the tibia. It is likely that this problem was the reason that many, if not most, orthopedists chose to put the femoral drill hole anteriorly. Finally, all of the previous factors resulted in the recommendation for constructing an imaginary clock in the notch and aiming for 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock when drilling the femoral hole. This was a case of orthopedists begging the question, that is, assuming the truth of an unproven point and using that point in their argument. The error of that assumption is not recent news. No clock was needed when we reconstructed the ACL with open surgery 30 years ago. The proper location and need for drilling the femur through a medial portal was apparent to Muller in his book in 1983. Several recent authors, such as Defreit, and especially the work of Freddie Fu, have shown the erroneous, misleading nature of the advice to depend on a clock in the mind's eye. For precision in ACL reconstruction, depend on accurate arthroscopy and knowledge of anatomy. Time out and leave the clock on the wall.